Thanks. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Awesome. Yeah. Ready for? Are you excited to be back here for the start of school and every everybody's all, all happy about their classes and everything. Everybody gets scheduled. Good. Good to go. Well, um, I'm not going to hold you long tonight, but I really. Uh, I'm here first and foremost um, um, for Dr. Ray. Uh, she does an outstanding job, and I and I, I do want to uh, publicly thank her for everything that she's done. Not only for me um, going way back, but for you and for all of those who came out of uh, the Com program. She's just been absolutely tremendous. Let's give her a hand. I also want to thank um, the athletic department, um, Perk Weisenberg, who's not here, and, and John Coles for their support. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> I want to thank Andrea Moser, my partner, who does an outstanding job um, in all aspects of life. Give her a hand. <laughs> and anyone else I missed, um, just again, I'm, I'm excited to be here and just, just happy to, to share some, some information with you tonight that I really believe that can help you um, throughout your career. First, let's, let's start off by talking about the brand. You know, we talk about adding leader to your brand, but what is your brand? Who, who can tell me what their brand is and, and, and what they, what you feel like your brand is? Your name? Okay. How you present yourself, express yourself. Anyone else? Brand. We hear that word a lot. It's in the last five to seven years, it's a buzzword in, in marketing. It's a buzzword in the communication world. Your brand. What's your brand? Any other thoughts on brand? Um, if I say, and you, and you guys may be, too young for this, so I'm, I'm going to show my age here. But if I say I want to be like Mike, and I say if I could be like Mike, like Mike, well, what what do you think about? The Gatorade, uh, commercial with the Gatorade commercial with Michael Jordan. Gatorade comes to your mind. Gatorade comes to his mind because Gatorade is the is a brand. You know it when you see it. You, you see the lightning bolt, you hear the jingle, that commercial, that commercial was made probably before some of you were born, but you still know it because it's, 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 it resonates with you. Back, back when I was coming up, believe me, Gatorade wasn't very good. It, they got good over the years. It, it started to taste really well um, because they realized that they had a package there that they could sell. It was, it was for more than just football players or athletes. Now you see everyone drinking Gatorade. The brand has expanded. But when you, when you see Gatorade as a brand, it's something that resonates with you. And the same thing with you or me. My brand um, has been consistent over the years. When I was here, uh, my brand was the same. When I, when I went to uh, uh, the NCAA, my brand stayed the same. When I opened my own company, my brand was the same. Now the th things that I'm doing now with my television show and, and athletic director, my brand is still the same. And it, it goes, it carries with you throughout the years. Now I've tweaked it a little bit and, 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 and really was able to uh, elevate it in some aspects. But for the most part, when I was here at Fair State University as a student, just like you, uh, my brand was very similar. I, I had I dressed a certain way. Um, I presented myself a certain way. My actions were a certain way. And that's how you become successful. That's how you, you know, really uh, get to the level you want to be at if your, when your brand is consistent and people know what your, what your brand is. If I make a phone call to some people right now and ask for a favor um, in the professional world, in the sports world, before, I, before they even answer the phone, when they look at the caller ID, most likely they're going to they're gonna pick it up and they say, oh, yes, yeah, Ira, okay, you know, and, and they'll talk. That, that's all a part of my brand. Your brand precedes you. You know, your brand is, is, is what, what you are every single day. It has to be authentic, though. It can't be something that you portray you are, but then you really, really not. So, so that's what your brand is. So, when you, so right now, you, you're in the process of cultivating that brand. You're in the process of, of working on it and, and making it 
your own and making it even better than what it already is. And every day you need to work on that and, and think about it. what is it. And, and some of you right now, you don't know. So maybe you should go and, and talk to some people. Ask Dr. Ray, say, hey, what do you think my brand is? And if she has you for a class or she has you um, in, in one of her programs, uh, she'll be able to tell you, hey, here's where I think your brand is. And here's where we can work on it. Because every part of your brand, a lot of times, may not be a good part. It may not be something that, that you want to project. If, you're, if part of your brand is showing up late, if part of your brand is being dressed uh, you know, casually when you should be dressed more dressed up, if part of your brand is using profanity, if, if, if part of your brand is doing, th doing things just okay and, and, and doing things average, those things you need to change right now so, they, so they're no longer a part of your brand because that can really hurt you as you move forward because a lot of times your brand will be out there before, before you will. When I was interviewing for an athletic director's job, before I even uh, had my first interview, the, the, the hiring superintendent already knew who I was. And the reason why she knew was because she had done her research all throughout the internet and, 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 hard, and, and then talked to some people before I even came in for an interview. I didn't know that. She told me later after I got the job. But had my brand been bad, if you had Googled me, and, and Google is, is going to be a part of some of, you, some, of you, some of your brand, if you had Googled me and, and it came up, you know, all kinds of things came up, you may be, you know, as a hiring manager, you're going to look at that and say, you know what, I'm not sure that this is the right candidate. You know, so, so think about that. Your brand is being affected. Every day it's being affected on social media. Uh, anytime you interact with people, that's, that becomes a part of your brand, uh, what you're projecting consistently. So, so, that, so that's important to understand your brand. From a leadership standpoint, who in here can give me their definition of leadership? What does leadership look like? Someone's there, someone that is there before practice and the last one to leave practice. Someone else. What does leadership look like? Go ahead. It, yeah, not, not physically look like, but what does it look like to you? Like, like if somebody said, hey, you know what, give me a definition of leader. What, what, would, that, what would that be for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Anyone else? Leader, go ahead. Like a good example for like somebody to follow, you know, your pattern, like your mannerisms. If you, uh, you know, you present yourself in a positive image for somebody to follow, for a group of people to see, then I feel like that's, you know, that's um, somewhat of a leader too. A group of people to see so they can, you can follow. That's, that's good. Go ahead. Good. Those are, those are all good examples of, of being a leader. And you know what? Uh, when you're a leader, you, it's one of those things that, that inherently comes to you that you don't have to go around and say, hey, hey, I'm a leader, I'm a leader, I'm a leader. When you're a leader, opportunities will come your way. When you're, when you're a good leader, people know it, and they'll put you in charge of things, and you, you'll get opportunities that you, that you thought you would never get because people can see that, that leadership in you. I mean, I'll give you an example. When I was here at Fair State uh, University, and I was the executive director of our alumni association and associate uh, director of, the, uh, of Fair State alumni, I was the youngest administrator uh, to be in that role, you know? And, and, and I, was, I was thinking every single day of, you know, am I ready for this? Can I handle this? And in my mind, sometimes I felt like that was no, but I kept getting more and more responsibility. And I, one day I went and I talked to 
my VP and I said, hey, I have, we have all these people around me that have so much more experience, that have been here for several years. Why do I continue to get this responsibility? And, and, and you keep putting me on big projects. We had, a, we had the Stanley Cup here uh, one year and it was a huge project and it was a big deal. We had national media, it was, it was huge. And, and I was leading this project and I thought to myself, wow, you know, first of all, picking up a Stanley Cup, I had it in the back of my car and I drove it from the airport to Big Rapids. So that's a claim to fame right there, having a Stanley Cup in your, in your car, uh, driving, driving it up here to Big Rapids. And I had the guy next to me with the white gloves, so that was kind of cool. But just being on, being on all the leads on all these projects, he just kept saying to me, you are a leader. You are a leader. And he, he believed that in me and saw that in me before I even felt it really. I felt I was a leader on the football field when I played. I felt like I was a leader in, in, the, in the comm program and all that, but I was new to administration at the time. So that was, that was something that was, that was very new to me. But one thing stayed the same. Remember I told you about that brand? It was all my skills and my brand and my leadership transferred over to the working world. So it, what, you, what you're becoming here on a daily basis, it will transfer if it's authentic and if it's real. So, so, so the, the word leader, uh, don't take it like, I mean, it is a word that, that will resonate with a lot of people and that's something that can help you elevate to the next level. So here, I'm gonna give you four things. So here's, here's the nuts and bolts. Here's where the rubber meets the road. I'm gonna give you four things to help you become a better leader uh, when you leave here tonight. And hopefully, it, like I said, it won't be long, but hopefully some of this stuff it, it, that you know, but it will connect the dots. Um, number one is you have to be an effective communicator. You have to be an effective communicator. If you want to be a great leader and you want to add leader to your brand, communication is key in all aspects of communication. I, I've been blessed to be a really good public speaker and interpersonal, communi inter interpersonal communication I do well, in groups I do well. One thing that I really struggled with early on was written communication. It was something that was a weakness of mine early on, but I, I continued to work on it, I continued to develop it. And I ended up working at a newspaper and it got better and better and better. So I, I saw that as something that I needed to improve on because to be an effective communicator, you have to have all aspects of it. And so I, I got better in that area. And so that in turn allowed me to be a really, really good communicator and you know, from just being a good one. Because the, 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 when you add the writing piece, you have the public speaking and you have the being able to talk one-on-one -on -one with people, those are, those are the three areas of communication that, that's, that's, that's really good. You know, so if you, if you want to be a great, the, the, the greatest leaders in the world are those that not come up with the best plans. There's a lot of great plans out there and a lot of great ideas, and we'll talk about some of that later. But you have to be able to communicate. And if you're not communicating effectively with, with people and you say, hey, I got an idea, and you're working on a project with a team and, and you shove it down their throat and say, hey, we're going to do this idea and here's the way it's going to go. And everybody's looking at you kind of like, hey, what? what's going on? We, we, we didn't buy into this. That's not effective communication. So in turn, that hurts your leadership. And people are saying, hey, we don't want this person to be our leader because they didn't get everyone's buy-in. They didn't have a consensus. So before you do anything, when you're working with people and, and you have to, and it's not just you, and you, you're trying to, to bring a team together, you have to get everybody on the same page. If I'm a captain of a team and I see that some players may not be giving their all, it may not be working hard, you, how am I going to communicate that? Am I going to go and front the player off in front of everybody? Or am I going to bring the player to the side and say, hey, you know what? You know, you can work a little harder. We want to see a little bit more out of you. That's, that's effective communication. Am I going to go right to the coach and say, say hey, you know what, coach? Uh, I, I know we won, but I can tell you, you know, John over here, he, he wasn't really putting out like, like we thought he should. Or am I going to say to John, you know what? 
we won the game, but we saw some things in you as a captain. I want to be the first to tell you we believe in you. You have to continue to work hard, and we think you can get to that next level. That's effective communication. So understand that, you know, when you, when you uh, are a leader and you want to, 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 to be the best leader, the communication is, is, is so important. Does that, does that make sense? And, and just understand from a, from, a, from a leadership standpoint, you have to be able to do it in, vi in various ways. You know, whether, like I said, whether it's writing, um, whether it's, you know, speaking like this, whether it's one-on-one. -on -one. So knowing when and where and how to, how to communicate with people is, is key uh, as far as being a, being a great leader and adding leaders to your brand. Number two is your actions and words have to match. Your actions and words have to match. And this is something that's, that's really difficult a lot of times because, you know, you know, we all feel like we're, we're, we're good at a lot of things and, hey, you know what, um, I'm good at this or I'm good at that. You know, one of the things that I learned is a lot of times you're probably not as good as you, good as you think you are. You know, um, even as a public speaker, now I, I get paid and I fly all over the country and speaking and I do things on television. You know, there's one person I always ask to critique me when I'm speaking, and that's Dr. Ray. And she comes back to me every single time and says, hey, actually, it was pretty good, but you could do this, 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 and this better. And I, you know what, your hands were moving too much, and, you, and your hands, I mean, she, she doesn't do it as much as she used to, but she still gives me points. Today, when I got here, I have a television show, um, you know, on Fox, and, and it's gotten rave reviews so far to the producer, and everybody said, oh, man, this is amazing. First time I see Dr. A, she said, hey, you know what? Actually, you need to slow down with your speaking. You need to you know, change your shirt. You need to do this. But it was good because, again, it brought me back to understanding that, that maybe I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And, and that, that happens a lot. So when I say your actions and, wor and, actions, um, and words have to match up, just, you, know, you may think you're doing great, but understand what, what is that being measured by? You know, where, where is that? Who, who's measuring that? So... Uh, you know, if, if you feel like you're, you're doing great at something, make sure you're getting an honest evaluation of what you are doing. And make sure that if you say, hey, you know what, I'm great, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to give 110%, I'm going you know, to be the first to, like you said, first to get there, the last to leave, make sure that happens. If, you, if you're in a, in a sport and, you, and you're playing and you're working out and you're uh, putting on Facebook or Twitter, uh, I had a hard workout and I worked hard and, and hashtag champions. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> and then all of a sudden we see you in wind sprints and you can, and you're the last and you can't get up and down the court. But you've been telling me all summer you've been working hard. And something's not right, right? And you've been putting water on your face and, and taking a picture and putting it on Twitter uh, and saying, hey, I'm working hard. You know, I mean, so just understand that, you know, your, your actions have to be in line. You know, a lot of times we see uh, so many people out there who are working hard and are doing a great job. So their actions match up, and that makes great leaders because the first thing as a leader, everybody's eyes is on you. They're watching you. When I came to, to, to Oklahoma, so I'm the athletic director, no matter what my resume said, people wanted to see if I'm going to be at that soccer game at 3 o'clock when the gates open with a cast box and all the things that I need and, and everything. And I didn't know a lot about what I was doing. I had some good people around me to help, but I was there with my, with my sleeves rolled up, suit off, you know, a polo shirt on, ready to work because that's why I'm here. You know, yes, I want to do some big picture things. Yes, I have a lot of things that I want to do, you know, from facilities to, to marketing to in-game, all that stuff. But if I'm not doing the little things every single day, the big stuff doesn't mean as much. And people are saying, you know what? This guy, he's good in, in this area, but actually he's not good in that area. And I never, ever want that, and you shouldn't either. Or they may say, hey, you know what? This person is a lot of talk, but the actions aren't there. So make sure that you're locked in and working hard in every aspect when it comes to being that, being that leader. I don't care how much you're making. I, I don't care. I mean, I was, you know, I was doing, I mean, we were, I was getting little hay off the field, 
you know, the other day, just be, just so our soccer team had a nice little surface, you know, you know, to play on. I was the guys were behind, and I was helping. I mean, it doesn't matter what my pay grade is. It's the fact that, hey, I'm in charge. So people are looking at me and they want to know, hey, is this guy going to do it? Is, this, is, is, he, is he going to be in here with us? Not telling us what to do, getting, getting in there and doing it. Now, you can't do that all the time. And so, you got, so you're, of course, you're going to hire good people to do certain things. But you still have to, your actions still have to match up. So, so please make sure that that happens in every aspect you know, leadership, make sure, that, make sure that those actions and words really connect because a lot of times I, I think, you know, we want them to connect or we think in our mind they connect, but they don't really, really connect. So, and, and one thing that I've seen is if once, you, once the team that you're on, whatever it is, whether it's basketball, volleyball, whether it's, whether it's a, a student organization, once those actions don't connect, and I mean, actions and words don't connect, then you're, then you're done. I mean, you're, you're absolutely done. Nobody, nobody's going to respect that anymore because they say, hey, you know what? This person was talking, but it, it didn't, you know, it, it didn't match up. So, so think about that. Um, number three, number three. So that's, that's, number, that's number two, making sure your actions and words match up. Number three is be creative and innovative. Be creative and innovative. You have to, Dr. Ray, do what in hockey? Skate to where the puck's going to be. Skate to where the puck is going to be. That's a great phrase, and it's so true. If, if someone hires you to be a leader of their organization, they want to know that, hey, you know what? This person was able to see things that wasn't there before. And I'm not saying you have to recreate the wheel all the time. Sometimes what's there is fine, but you have to be able to see the big picture. You have to take what, maybe an old idea and make it a new idea. You have to, you have to take things that, 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 look, that, that, that has a blank sheet of paper and, and turn it into something. I remember my first opportunity here at Ferris to, to do something that was big, you know, when I hired in, um, working in the alumni office, I, I met with the then, then new president, um, Dr. David L. Isa. Uh, that's how long ago it was, and we, we sat down, and he said to me, he said, hey, you know what, I want to get out and I want to meet constituents uh, here. I'm, new, I'm a new president, so I want to get out, I'm a, I want to meet our alumni. And I said, oh, so, so what are you thinking, Dr. Isaac, what, where, where's your, what are your thoughts? And he said, you know what, I don't know. He said, figure it out. And, uh, and so he left, and so I, I stayed there all night, you know, and I just literally was, you know, trying to figure out a plan, an idea to come up with, I, you know, and I just kept thinking, thinking, thinking. And finally, I came up with this idea of a bus tour. We're going to have this bus tour, and we're going to stop in 16 cities throughout the state of Michigan, and we're going to do it in five days. I sent him a four-page proposal and said, hey, here's, the, here's my idea. He, we, I met with him in the, uh, a couple days later, and he came back and said, I love it. This is awesome. I lo absolutely love this idea. He said, I had no idea you were thinking like this. I, you know, I thought we were going to get in a car and go out and meet some people. But, but my, thought, my thought was, is always over-deliver. When you're, when you're an innovator and you're a creator, you want to over-deliver. You don't want to give people what they're, what they're looking for or the norm or say, you know what, hey, roll out the balls. You want to say, I got, I got an idea, I got a thought that can be even greater than what you were thinking. And that's what people like this in higher roles than you, when they know they can pass something off to their leader, and their leader has an innovative and creative thought that can really take it to the next level. We did that bus tour and uh, ended up winning a, a Case 5 award for um, number one special event uh, throughout the throughout the country, and we, we went to Chicago. And we accepted that award, and again, it wasn't just for me. It was a we had a, a team of people that ended up working on this project, and it was and it, it was really really great. And we did it a couple years in a row after that, um, because but again, it all started with a blank piece of paper. Sometimes your your superiors aren't going to give you the answers. You have to figure it out. If you're on a team, and a coach comes in and and shuts the door and says, Hey, you know what, guys? Uh, you know, guys, meaning guys and girls, we haven't been playing well. I don't know what it is, slams the door and walks out. Then what? Then you know it's time for 
me, the captain, or the captains, to step up and figure something out. You have to come up with something, it, it, something that innovated, something that's going to help, something that's going to work. So when you're, when you're hired in somewhere, uh, you know, when you get your first job, one of the things that you should always do when you get your first job, you make a list, make a list of everything you need to do essential, things that are operational every single day, I need to do this to, to, to stay employed. And then what I always do is make another list and say, you know what, here's some big picture things that I can do that's going to really go over the top. And I'm one of those people, and, and hopefully some of you are too, where my leadership style is, I'm trying to hit a grand slam. I'm not looking for a single. I'm not looking for a double. I'm not looking for a triple. Those are all nice. And not even looking for a home run. I'm looking for Miguel Cabrera style, grand slam, you know, Miggy. That, that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking because I, I feel like this. And the one thing I told the people at Okemos, I said, if you're looking for somebody, during my interview process, I said, if you're looking for someone to get the referees here, have a, have a good games, uh, make sure, you know, all the kids are, you know, not in trouble. I said, if that's the only thing you're looking for, you got the wrong guy. You really do. And I, I told them flat out that in the interview. And it wasn't arrogant or cocky, but I wanted them to know that I'm going to challenge you in different ways. Different things I'm going to try to bring to the table. In the last few days, I've been on the phone with Adidas. We're in the process right now. I'm trying to get an Adidas contract, be the first school in the Capital City area to have a contract with Adidas. I'm working it. You know, I had a contact there. We're working it. We, we go around the clock trying to make this happen. You know, we had one of the largest crowd ever in our first football game because, you know, we put on this a big event. We had a, a track meet at halftime. It's all kinds of stuff. But the, the soup knows that my mentality is, she said, no, this is why we hired you. We want somebody to push the envelope. We want that innovator. We want that creator. And a lot of people are looking for that. You know, when I look down at my notes here and follow, I mean, where, where, where did we get this from? iPhone. Innovator. Innovator, right? Creator. Steve Jobs, right? The, the, the late, great Steve Jobs at Apple was fired and they hired somebody in there that was a business person, that, that, that was going to make sure, they said, this Steve Jobs has a lot of crazy, wild ideas. We're not, in, man, we can't, we, can't, we can't roll with him. And then all of a sudden, Apple did what? Went down in the tubes, right? Because this business guy, he was great in business, but you know what? It was no business to be great in because he didn't have the, the innovation and creation, creative mind to really figure out what was next and, and what was, where the puck was going to be. And that's what it's all about, knowing what's happening before it happens and being able to see that big picture. So Steve Jobs, Apple did what? Brought him back. Because they said, hey, we're, we're, we're going in the tank here. All those crazy ideas that took a long time to do, and we thought you were wasting money, we need you. And he brought them back. And every time you saw the man with the jeans and the black shirt come out, you knew what? Something new, right? Something special. And that's what you can be. You want that, that's what you want to add to your brand. Well, anytime somebody sees you, they know it's going to be something special because you are a creator and an innovator. That's important. And finally, number four, the most important thing of them all, commitment. There's a lot of people that can be in your shoes right now as an athlete, as a student, as somebody that's sitting in here listening to me. But they came up with a thousand, I, thousand reasons why they couldn't do it, why they couldn't be here. Maybe it was expectations set on them early on. Maybe a fifth grade teacher said, you know what? We think, we think you're average. We don't think you can go to college or whatever. And maybe their parents didn't fight that off. Or maybe it was a high school teacher or whatever. But they bought into those expectations. And they didn't have the commitment to see that through and understand that there, there are going to be barriers. There are going to be things that come in your way. And Dr. A can attest, I had so many barriers in my life, um, I'm not even supposed to be here. 
supposed to be a statistic. But there was no way in the world that I was going to let something get, stop me from achieving my dream, stop me from achieving my goals. Because my commitment was too great. Anything that came down, I was like, not letting it happen, right? Because my commitment was there. And I had a lot of obstacles. Growing up, didn't have a lot of money. You know, came through, had, you know, different things I had to fight through in college and, 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 and you know, and all of that. But it was nothing that I felt like could stop me because I knew what was inside of here. And a lot of people are interested in doing a lot of things. All of you have interests. But some of you right now are thinking, you know what? I'm interested in doing some great things, but you don't have the commitment. You don't have the commitment. You, when the obstacle come, instead of doing what I just did, some of you will retreat. And I hope after tonight, none of you will ever retreat again. When something comes in your way, and it will be a lot of things that come in your way. And right now, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is a playground. You're in a playground here. I walked in here, and everybody's having a great time and fun, and they're doing things down the hall. And I, and I looked at Andrew, and I said, man, this is a playground. This is awesome. This is the life. You are living the life right now as students and student athletes. But when you get out there in that thing they call the real world, the real big bad world, away from the, the protection of Fair State University, there are going to be some major obstacles and some major adversities. And those who are able to get through those are the ones who you see are the leaders and the ones who you see are successful. That commitment is, I, I can't stress it enough. There's a, there's a great saying, um, and this will, you know, uh, tap Dr. Ray a little bit, but that's okay. There's a great saying by the legendary Bo Schembecker, the late, great Bo Schembecker. And Bo used to always say, and, he, and it's, it's on the Michigan locker room, those who stay will become champions. Those who stay will become champions. And what he meant by that is there's a, there's a lot of sacrifice that goes along with being a, a champion. You're going to be sweat, sweating. There's going to be blood. There's going to be tears. There's going to be wanting to go home. There's going to be wondering why I'm, why I'm here and my friends are on the beach with my girlfriend or my boyfriend, my ex-girlfriend, my ex-boyfriend. Right? You know, they're, they're having a good time. But you're, but you're there sweating and working hard. Because you're committed. It's not good enough to be just interested. It's not good enough to be just kind of wanted. The one thing I always know, there, there are people out there that are smarter than me. There are people out there that are more innovative, creative, and all of that. But the one thing I always know, and I, I guess three and four hours of sleep will tell you this, there's nobody out there I feel that will outwork me. There may be some people that work as hard, but there's nobody out there that will outwork me because my commitment is relentless. And your commitment has to be relentless if you want to be the leader that we're talking about tonight. And there are going to be, like I said, there are going to be some things that, that, come in, that, that, that come in your way. On, in November, on November 10th, 2010, I walked into the NFL headquarters in New York City. And Roger Goodell was standing at, right in the doorway, not right in the doorway, but off to the side. And I walked up to Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, and I shook his hand and I said, I'm working with the NCAA. He said, oh, yeah, I know. I know I, you guys are doing a great program. We're, we're, we're teaming up and all of that. And he said, I heard a lot of good things. And we, we chatted. And I said to him, I always wanted to play in the NFL. I played college football. I always wanted to make it to the NFL. And you know what he said to me? He said, you, you did. You did. 
And that, that meant a lot because what he was saying was, of course, I'm not playing, but I made it there and I'm working with the NFL. So in turn, my dream came true of making it to the NFL. And I'm standing in 280 Park Avenue, New York City, talking to the commissioner of the National Football League, a kid that grew up in poverty and was supposed to be a statistic. And I'm standing in a three-piece suit talking to the commissioner, about to go in and have a meeting and orchestrate a big merger between the NFL and the NCAA as, as it relates to college football and college football coaches and all of that. But the only reason I was able to get there and do that and do any of the things I've been, I've been able to do in my life is because my commitment was so strong. My commitment to be the best that I could be, to squeeze every single ounce out of my ability was there. So with that being said, make sure that your commitment is the number one thing, is the strongest thing you have. Because there are going to be some times where you, you're tested and challenged. And if you're wavering and you take a step back and you blink, you won't get there. But if you stay committed, you'll make it to your NFL, whatever that may be in your life. Thank you. Any questions? Questions? Anybody want to work in sports? Talk to me. What, what do you want to do? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> oh, for a job? Oh, hey, talk to Dr. Ray. That may, we might be able to do that. <laughs> Any questions? Go ahead. Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Dr. A told me. No. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where you have to, and I, and I tell people all the time, um, you find that passion, whatever that is. If you find your passion, you'll find your purpose. So spend some time continuing to look for that passion because there's a lot of times when I'm feeling that way, and, and a lot lately, and I've been tired, run down, not defeated, but tired and run down. And I just, under, I, I kind of smiled to myself and said, hey, you know what? I'm doing what I really want to do, though. <laughs> you know, I'm still tired and I'm still run down, but I'm, but I'm doing what I really want to do. So, so try to find that, try to find that passion. And I think that will help you get re-energized and re-renewed and, and have a, re a sense of, uh, excitement about things that you're doing because enthusiasm is the key, is a key too um, to a lot of things and if you if you're not enthusiastic about something and, and when you're tired and wore down you'll just that's when you'd be like oh, I quit the one thing you can't do right you can't quit that had a commitment mm -hmm. questions Go ahead. I know you did a, you got a television show did you ever do like radio or sports talk or anything like that? <laughs> I did I did I had a um, uh, radio show on um, ESPN Radio affiliate then uh, on uh, 97.1 was um, in, in Muskegon and Grand Rapids and also was on ESPN Detroit uh, 1090 uh, radio show on there. So, so yeah, I've, I've done a lot of radio. Radio is uh, Why'd you get up? Greater opportunities, <laughs> you know, uh, greater opportunities. And, and, and again, um, not to say I won't go back to it someday. Uh, someday I'm, I'm hoping that I can, I can have a radio show, a TV show, working, administrate, you know, maybe I need to create another person, but try to <laughs> do all that stuff. But it's fun. Radio is fun. Yeah. You, uh, you looking to get into radio? I'm a music industry management student. Okay. I'm minoring in law, so I mean, radio is just like a side thing that I like to do. Okay. So, Chat with me afterwards. We can, we can talk. Sure. Yeah. Questions? Other questions about working in sports? A lot of people raise their hands, say they want to work in sports. Go ahead. Uh, where do you see like the relationship between sports and social media in the next five years? I see you got your, your Twitter account up there. It's like, what have you personally seen in your end? 
Social media, um, their jobs right now in sports and social media, and they're, they're coming more and more every day. I mean, you're, you know, people are hiring social media coordinators, social media directors, because social media has taken over the mainstream media in a lot of ways. Most of the stuff, most of the things now, shoot, no one is really going to, if I'm looking at the Detroit Free Press, I'm not really going to the website. I mean, I, I follow the writers right on Twitter, so everything is right there. I don't even have to go to the website. I mean, it's all on social media. So, so I, I see social media having a big role. If you want to be a social media coordinator, uh, social media director, now's the time to get in. But think about what your angle is going to be because they you know they'll bring you in and say hey you know what I'm good on Twitter I'm good on Facebook that's good but how can that help if you are working for a team how can that help our bottom line what's your plan show me your plan on paper that's going to help our bottom line with social media so be prepared for that if you get an interview to go into a team about social media because that's something they're going to look at not just hey you know what um, me and my friends talk back and forth about this or that that, that does no good. What is your plan that's going to increase revenue in, in different ways via social media? Think about that. Go ahead. Uh, how did you go about getting connected um, to start, you know, getting into like the ESPN radio and like how did you go about getting connections to start building up the dream? Um, you know, that's a, that's a great question. And, and it started right here. Um, just putting in the work here. I built my name here, built, built my brand here. Uh, back when I was a student, I went to uh, Dr. Ray and I said, hey, there's a void here on campus. We don't have a sports show for our coaches. And I was still playing at the time, playing football. And I said, she's like, oh, you're, you're right. I don't think she, was, she really knew that, but she said, oh, yeah, you're right. So, we, we, so, I, so I, I, I came up with this proposal and I took it to her, and she, she looked at it. She said, this is great content. Um, not very well wit written, but actually I, the content is pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. So we're going we're gonna to work on this writing here, you know, and that, it, there, there's a writing thing. But, and, and, and we did. And we took, I took it to the then president, and I said, hey, you know what? We want to create, create a TV show here at Ferris. Um, and he said, really? For sports? I said, yeah. And he said, oh, great, let's do it. And I said, but actually, it's going to cost $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, you know, and he, and he said, let me see your plan. And I showed him a plan, and he sent me to the vice president at the time. And the vice president said, I don't believe you can do this. And then after six, six days of coming back and back, he finally said, all right, let's, let's try it. So anyways, I started a TV show, and the TV show did really well here at the Ferris Channel. It did so well, it was picked up by Fox 33, in, in Cadillac in 9 and 10. And so uh, once it got picked up, I was able to now put on my resume, I just didn't work for Ferris, I just didn't do a TV show for Ferris, I did a TV show that was picked up by Fox, a Fox affiliate. So I had that on my resume. So that's how I started down that path. And then the other thing I did was, once I got the TV show uh, going, I, I sought out good internships. I did an internship at ZZM in Grand Rapids. I did an internship at 9 and 10. Um, and then my biggest internship when I was a student was at Fox 2 in Detroit, where I met so many people going to Tigers games, Pistons, Lions. And when I was going there, I was going there with a purpose. People, when I went up to meet people, I, I didn't just get their business card. We had a conversation. I would get them when they weren't working. I said, hey, you know what? I'd love to take you to lunch. I'd love to have a follow-up conversation with you. That's how I met a lot of people that work for ESPN and and, and all of that because I, I, I initiated that. And they say, hey, well, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm, in, you know, I'm over here at Fox, I'm interning. Oh, well, yeah, call me, email me, stay in touch. And that's how, that's how it starts. You have to have that aggressiveness when it comes to, to, to really working with people and, 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 and networking. And networking is more than just giving a business card and saying, hey, I'm so-and-so from an intern at Fox. If I would've did that, that card would've went in file A. You know what file A is, right? The trash, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they have no time for that. They're, they're all, they've already made it. So I got to show them why, I'm, why it's important for them to, to help me. And what I would do a lot of times is I would take people to lunch. I would call them on the phone in their office and say, hey, you have a few minutes? Tell me about yourself. Everyone loves to talk about themselves. So now all of a sudden you, you had that dialogue going and that helped. So the, the networking started here and I was able to branch out through internships and make those connections. And then that's how I got with ESPN and did be able to do all that.
Other questions? Who wants to work in sports? Get them all out now. Don't leave anything on the table. You had another one? No, you good? OK. <laughs> Um, athletic director, that's a good question. Uh, I really wasn't looking for a while to get into to being an athletic director, but um, just a great opportunity came with a great school that's one of the, the best schools in Michigan from an academic standpoint um, and an athletic standpoint, and it all fit and it all worked, and I was able to work it in my schedule, do all this other stuff at the same time, and it just kind of worked out. Now, how I got in athletic administration was the NCAA. That really, that really was able to... I was able to really uh, dove into athletic administration and really love doing things at the NCAA at that national level uh, like that. And believe it or not, this is a strange thing, and this is, what I, this is what I'm trying to tell everybody as far as the connections and the networking piece. Before I went to the NCAA, I was the first employee they hired in my whole division, big division, that never worked in college athletics. Think about that. You're going to the number one the college athletic place of all, the, the NCAA, the top, top brass, and I never worked in college athletics prior to that. I, just, I worked in alumni. I worked with athletics a lot and did a lot of things. But again, when I got the interview, I was able to convey that my skills would transfer over and, and, and really work, and, it, and they did. It was great, a great ride there. So, so that's something that's, that, that you have to think about when you're looking to, to make that next step. How can you tr show that your skills can transfer, even if, you're, even if it's a position that you feel like, hey, you know what, I'm, I, don't, I don't totally meet, meet the description that they have here on paper, but here's how I can show you how my, how, how my skills are transferable. But that was kind of my journey into athletic administration, did that, and then obviously now being an AD, that, you know, that kind of followed up with that. Other question, who wants to work for a professional team? College teams, broadcasting, TV, television reporter. Yeah, or the behind the scenes stuff. Behind the scenes, okay, good. Who else in television? Radio, internet writing. Oh, good. All right. Any other questions? Good. Oh, good. Um, I know you know like a lot of different things, a lot of different skills and tools. How often do you revert back to, you know, the various skills that you have now, and how often do you use them, and how important is it to keep those skills sharp? Very important. Um, you play basketball. Yeah. Okay. Think about it in this. Think about it this way. In basketball, some of the greatest basketball players you know, if you watch Michael Jordan, LeBron, Kobe. The greatest things they have is not athleticism. That's a part of it. But there's a lot of guys out there that are athletic. But the one thing that Jordan had over anything else, if you watch, you can go back and you know he's a little, little old, go back and watch YouTube, is fundamentals. Fundamentals. Being able to play into his late 30s, lead the NBA in scoring when he couldn't jump out the gym anymore. Because you know what he could do? He could hit that 15-footer. He had the patent and fade away down. You know what I mean? He had all the fundamentals down. And the great players have the fundamentals in every sport. And that takes you, along, that takes you further than anything else. Kobe's so great, not because he, he can't jump like he used to, but he can still go out there and give you 30 and 10 because his fundamentals are so good. Footwork is so good. He has a lot of tricks with the ball. Everything is good because his fundamentals are good. And the same thing here, same thing, the things that I learned here in, 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 all, in my comm classes, I take with me every single day. I talk about them all the time. The things that I learned when I was working here back in the day, I talk about them all the time because those are the fundamental things that are going to carry you when, all the way to where you want to go. Because if you don't have the fundamentals, everything else doesn't mean as much. It, it, it has to be substance. The style is, is, is okay. But the substance is the key, and the substance is the fundamentals. The fundamentals that I learned in Calm 101 when I went up to, to give a speech, the fundamentals that I learned in, in Calm and Intercultural and when I, when I was learning to, to, to understand how other people communicate around the world, 
You know, so those are things that I take with me all the time. So the, the fundamentals are key. So I, I use them on a daily basis, all the time, in every aspect. When I go and I meet with people, I don't start by talking. I spend first 15, 20 minutes listening. I just had a big meeting with a, with a person from Michigan State uh, the other day, and we sat there, and I listened to her talk for like, we had a 45-minute lunch. I listened for 30 or 45 minutes. She finally stopped talking and said, hey, so tell me a little bit about yourself. <laughs> you know, but, but, but I wasn't going to interrupt because I learned in communication way back when, when I was sitting in those seats like you guys are, that you want other people to get out what they want to get out, especially when you're in a situation where you feel like, hey, you know what, I can learn something. And that's how, that, that was the situation I was in. So, so, so to answer your question, a lot. I revert back to those skills, those skills a lot. So pick up right now and learn these skills. Everything that you, you have, you're, are you a comm major? So everything that, that Dr. Ray and you going through the comm program, take every class seriously. Pick up something from every class. I didn't love every comm class, but I got something out of every comm class because I knew one day it would, it would be very beneficial to what I'm trying to do. There are some teachers and professors in comm that I was like, uh, they're, not, I'm, they're not my favorite. Dr. A was my favorite, but, but, but some other, they weren't, but I knew that it was important to pick up what they were trying to teach me. You know what I mean? So, so that's, that's important. So right now, soak it all in because down the road, when you're playing professional ball or when the, when the air is out of the ball one day, you're gonna know, you're gonna, you're gonna know what you learn here and you're gonna be able to revert back to all those skills. Any other questions? Hey, thank you for your time. Look forward to uh, helping, you, helping you guys. You can follow us on Twitter. Any questions there, just, just give us a shout. Thank you.